Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new studio. Now I know it's a little bit different because everything is empty behind me and you all were used to tons of like stuff, I guess. But don't worry, I will be decorating as the time goes on. We've moved to a really nice area, but moving was incredibly stressful and I've counted an extra dozen greys on my head, so... Speaking of stress, I thought it would be a really good idea to do a video based on the trials and tribulations of what it means to be a sensitive person in this very non-sensitive world. I know many of you are sensitive people, highly sensitive people, or just sensitive in general. If you're here because you're an INFP, that's likely how you go about your life. Moving was really hard for me because I felt every emotion under the sun. I was happy because we left, but I was sad because, you know, I had my son in my old house. And coming to a new area, I've experienced a lot of like imposter syndrome because I'm in a different neighborhood, surrounded by different people. I've sent my daughter to a different school and it's all about adjusting to these new environments. And as a sensitive person, you go through a whole lot when you're experiencing different aspects in life. It doesn't even have to be like a new experience. It can be any experience. We sensitive folk feel things so immensely. So in today's video, I wanna discuss with you guys the different issues that we sensitive people go through. I wanna talk about the hardships of it and also the good sides of it too, because I feel it's important to have a balanced outlook on who we are as people, because being a sensitive person or a highly sensitive person is a personality trait. Sometimes with being sensitive it can come from places such as trauma but you can also have a mix of being just generally sensitive and past traumas. So I just kind of want to explore it in general and see if you guys can relate. So stay tuned. So the first one and this kind of sets off the tone for the rest of the points because this kind of tends to be the one that we all come back to all the time and that is overanalyzing everything. Many people overanalyze. It doesn't have to be just the highly sensitive person or the sensitive person. People with different disorders such as generalized anxiety disorder, people with ADHD, etc. We can all have a tendency to overanalyze and different people overanalyze for different reasons. The sensitive person, however, overanalyzes because we feel everything immensely. We read every single situation. We see things that others do not. We have a tendency of reading between the lines and picking apart certain situations in life. Our nervous systems are set up to respond to every tiny little aspect in our environment. And that includes things in our social situations or different messages that we're receiving. Some of this overanalyzing can be from trauma and for me personally I am a mixture of someone who is highly sensitive and someone who has experienced trauma in their life. As a result I suffer from things such as rejection sensitive dysphoria which I've mentioned on this channel and also imposter syndrome. You could experience this kind of thing in many different situations in your life. I was talking to a friend who has just landed her dream job and she feels like she's not deserving of it and she is an incredibly talented artist and she absolutely deserves it but it comes back to the fear of rejection, it comes back to feeling like you're an imposter in that situation because all you've ever kind of known is struggling. All you've ever kind of known is this aspect of the human condition where you're fighting for something and remaining in this forever cycle of always constantly trying and then bam, you've landed something that's potentially life-changing and you think, wait a second, and you have this big epiphany of like, what's going on? So how can overanalyzing ruin the sensitive person's life. Well, for one, it breaks our focus. If we are actively working on getting stuff done, for example, it can be really overwhelming and it can be something that we can only focus on instead of the thing that we need to be focusing on. It can be really exhausting. It can be really overwhelming. Through all of this, we end up just judging ourselves in a negative way. 
We end up being our biggest critics and placing so much emphasis and so much judgment on the way that we feel that we should be. It's really exhausting living that way. And if you kind of think about all the amount of cortisol that you release because of it, it's just like damn, like one thing after another, just make it stop, please. How was overanalyzing good though? Because yes, there is a good side of it. And that side of it is it becomes a prerequisite of change. It can be incredibly inspiring. Not so much the overanalyzing part and the anxiety, but the fact that you are analyzing. You're analytical. You are reading between the lines. You are picking up on subtle messages and analyzing them in a certain way that others may not. It doesn't always have to be a negative thing. In some instances, analyzing can turn into a negative pattern if you allow it to. But having the ability to analyze means that you have the ability to be self-reflective, which is such a good quality to have in our society and it is one that needs to be way highly valued way more highly valued whatever <laughs> being analytical means that you have the ability to be able to perceive and to understand and that's not bad it's not a bad thing i don't feel it's bad i like that <laughs> The next one is feeling our emotions strongly or intensity and this one can happen when an event comes into our life and we react to it but it can also be something really minor or small and we end up having a big reaction to something that is seemingly so small and insignificant but to us oh my gosh can it be a big deal and this is the frustrating part because we think why can't we just grow up and be like everyone else? Why can't we harden up like society expects us to? And that's the really lame thing about it. I think it was in my last video I mentioned that my husband likes to call me intense and that's very true. I live my life very intensely. I go through life feeling things in every different kind of situation and I'm never not feeling something. I'm never not analyzing something or making a judgment on something and not like a judgment in a negative way but just like a perception of something and I internalize it and I feel all the feelings associated with it and it can be exhausting and that is the part of it that I feel ruins my life ruins my life it is exhausting it is overwhelming you just want to have a break from feeling this intensity all the time and my husband often likes to put on emotionally driven movies or slow burns and I can't watch them. I have to put on a cheesy comedy and I know that people like us have a reputation of having good taste in art but I like trashy comedies and the reason I do is because it gives me a break from my brain. It gives me a break from my heart. It puts me into a different realm of just relaxing and taking me out of my head. What can intensity and emotion be used for though? Why is it good? I believe it's good because like overanalyzing, it becomes a prerequisite of change. Again, we sensitive people are unique in the way that when we want to create change, we feel it through our entire core and being. This translates into passion, which is a huge driving force of getting done this is the reason why i do my youtube videos it is probably the reason why you're inventing something or you're a musician and you write music or you i don't know what you do but it's probably the reason why you do what you do also the other thing is that you likely just not boring i mean i'm not a boring person i'm interesting i'll give myself that i'm an interesting person and not everyone likes that and that's fine but I'm certainly not boring. And that's something you can take away. You're not a boring person. You're interesting and you're unique. So there you go. Another one, and this is one that I do sometimes beat myself up for because it's very frustrating. And that is overwhelm in certain social situations. And these are certain social situations because of course, many sensitive people can also be extroverts but it goes back to the particular situation that it is. For me, I get really overwhelmed in a crowd where there is lots of activity going on. There's noise, there's 
physical energy moving around the room. There's too much talking. I can't concentrate on one thing at a time. I'm getting overwhelmed. There's too much information coming in. I don't like it. It's overwhelming. It's all bubbling up inside of me. Now, I get this in the bloody car. When we are driving somewhere, my husband talks to me, my daughter talks to me, and my son talks to me all at the same time. And it's like, ah, stop. Like, and I literally do that sometimes because I'm so overwhelmed by it when there's too much information coming in. And this is another reason I don't sleep at night because I can hear everything. I can hear the fridge going. I can hear the crickets outside. I can hear people snore in every single room. And it's so frustrating. This hasn't served me because in certain situations, especially when it comes to social gatherings with our peers, sometimes I find it really hard to talk. I find it really hard to start a conversation. I apparently do really well in the sense that I'm agreeable, I'm polite, and I stand there with confidence and conviction. And yes, that I do. And that's, that is who I truly am. It does take a bit of effort. And it is exhausting, but a lot of the time I just feel overwhelmed by these situations and I go away again overanalyzing the situation. So it's bad in the sense that I feel like I'm being judged, I feel like I'm not fitting in, that I can't find my place and that people don't really like me because... I have nothing interesting to say. This comes back to my rejection sensitive dysphoria, which I have had my whole life and is probably part of the reason why my friend group is really small and I only really click with certain kinds of people. And those friendships to me are priceless. And this brings me to the part where this particular aspect is good. We sensitive folk work really well in environments where we can analyze, be creative, and be soul touching with others. This doesn't mean it's just being one-on-one -on -one with people. This could be a big crowd. Heck, it could even be saying a speech on a podium to a whole crowd of people. But it's all about context. It's all about what's going on in that environment. Generally, a sensitive person will feel really overwhelmed if Again, there is big loud noises, too many people talking over the top of each other. But if it's an environment where people know who each other are and let each other have a turn to speak and the conversations are generally about really important subjects that that sensitive person values, then it's a good thing. This makes the sensitive person a healer for all intents and purposes. When we're in a situation where we are soul touching and actively listening and we're able to hone in with our full attention or as much attention as we can on what's going on, then we're acting as someone who can be healing for another person. This next one is we take things too personally. This is one thing that really has hurt me in the past and has set me up for a lot of, I guess, anxiety and fear. There has been so many jobs that I've had where I've been and bullied and I've taken criticism really personally. And I definitely understand the difference between constructive criticism and just manipulative behavior. And that's, I think, one thing that we sensitive people do notice the difference in. Still, constructive criticism, for me personally, needs to be done in a way in which I can actively learn from. So it needs to be in a language that I understand. And this may have a lot to do with having ADHD and the fact that I learn a lot differently from others. So... That's a separate issue though of being a sensitive person. It's hard for the sensitive person to set boundaries. It's hard for us to say no to things where we just really don't want to hurt people so we end up saying yes. We don't want to disappoint people because if we disappoint them, then they're going to reject us. And I think that's all what it comes down to, back to the whole rejection sensitivity. This makes it really hard for us because we think in our society, we value people who can be straight up, who can be honest, and who can take things on the chin. It's all about being hard and tough, toughening up, growing up, etc. And this is something that we put tremendous amounts of pressure on ourselves for. I particularly don't do that much anymore because I'm all about talking about sensitivities. This is what my whole channel is about. So... Yeah, it doesn't really bother me anymore, but I know that many of you experience that. The good part about this, however, is that 
because we feel sensitive to others' criticisms and negativity and whatever else you want to call it, we are generally sensitive to other people's feelings and their perspectives. Kindness in this world is one of the best qualities that you can have. We are missing that in our world and that is what we need more of. We all need to be kinder to each other. And the last one that probably bugs me the most is that we can not ever be fully content. Now this doesn't mean that we won't have moments of being content, moments of being happy, moments of being excited, but there feels like there's still something kind of missing and we can't figure out what it is. For me, I just get complaints from my family that I'm always irritated at something and I am like, if there is a niggle on me, I'm irritated and I get so irritated very quickly. My rage meter is like, really small and everything can set me off immensely and I'll just I'll have a big meltdown and again that probably has something to do with my ADHD but it's also my sensitivity as well because I'm so sensitive to everything on me I'm sensitive to what I hear I'm sensitive to what I feel I'm sensitive to everything and then feel everything and it can be something so small and I'll get irritated by it or I'll get sad by it or I'll just feel so much emotion by everything. The way that this kind of ruins our life is that we understand that it's unnecessary. We understand that self-acceptance or acceptance of our situation is the way to go. That being stoic almost is the path to true, pure happiness and contentment. But for someone like us who's sensitive to every little different thing, we get emotional flooding. So sometimes we just can't even help it. The information comes in and it floods and it's all over and it's really hard to turn off. There's like, there's no off button. This can be really hard for the people around us because someone like my husband, you know, he'll just say to me when we're having a rough patch, I wish I could just make you happy. I wish you could just be happy. And I feel really bad because a lot of the time, fundamentally, I am happy, I am content, but it's just little situations which set me off and it can be just momentary and it might seem like I'm fundamentally upset all the time, but it's just that I feel things so intensely and I can get irritated intensely for a little while. There is a good side of this though. And the good part is that sensitive people tend to be realists. We have an understanding of the world, of the real world. We highly sensitive people understand the human condition. We understand people. We understand situations. And we feel the weight of that. But we also feel the positive parts of that really immensely as well. We take all aspects from a situation and we feel them. They come in and we feel it through and through. And we understand the reality of the situation, even though maybe outwardly it doesn't seem like that. We're really good at reflecting on those certain things and having a great understanding of them. So that about wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel better about yourself or feel just a little bit more understood. I know I do. It feels good to be able to express myself, especially after this move, because my sensitivity definitely came to the forefront during this situation. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to doing more videos in my new studio and I'm really looking forward to decorating and I'd love to hear some of your ideas for future videos and for decorating as well because I want to make the background look really nice and so I was like thinking plants or I don't know, give me some ideas. I want your creative input because you guys are super creative. But for now, I hope you guys have a good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world and I'll see you guys all again for the next video. Bye.